Hey guys, in this video, we'll see how to pass value from one API to another API when each endpoint is kept in a separate test file. Now, it's very common to pass the output of one API as an input to another API, isn't it? So to demo the implementation, we would chain the APIs to perform CRUD operations on member entity. Now CRUD, as you may already know, stands for create, read, update and delete. We'll first make a post request to create a member and then retrieve the ID property from the response. Now using that ID property, we will then make a get request to pull the newly created member followed by a put request to update the same member and finally we'll run the delete request to delete that member. So I have created this chain package and inside that there are these five test files. I am assuming you have been following this series from the very first video and hence in the interest of time I have already written the basic code to generate request and response objects. Now, in this base test class, I have specified the default request and response specifications. And the remaining four classes just extend this base class so that I don't need to repeat this code, okay? So in here, in the request specification, we are setting up the base URI, the base path, we are adding the header, accept, okay? And set authentication since you know that we have implemented basic authentication in this API and finally we are just building up since we are using request spec builder likewise we are using response specification builder to generate the reference of response specification and in here we are just checking that the response contains this particular header content type application json and this now in create member class we are making a post request and extracting the id property of the newly created member from the response and then we are storing that property in an integer variable okay likewise you have get member class to get the newly created member and in here guys as you could see we are providing the path parameter okay to access the newly created member okay so we need this id okay where would this id come from this id would come from here okay then you have this update member again we are making use of this path parameter we are supplying the id which we again get from create member okay and then we are making the put request all right and I'm also logging the response onto the console using these two methods and at the end we have this delete method okay and again we are providing the ID all right let's focus now on how to pass value from one API to another now guys there are many ways to accomplish this so the first case would be imagine when all these endpoints are kept in the same test file currently we are doing these operations in separate file okay but you can just copy all this code and put that into one file okay so that's the case i'm referring to now in such case we can simply use the instance properties to share data amongst all the test methods okay very simple straightforward concept so in this scenario we would have created an id property of integer type to hold this id value isn't it now second case is when each endpoints are kept in the separate test file which is what we are doing in this video okay in such case we would separate the concern of storing data from test logic okay now a data repo class can suffice the requirement now we either would create as many properties as we want or create just one hash map to store all the data using key value pairs well it's not that simple because in real time project guys we do parallel execution and hence we should make these properties thread safe okay so in such cases we may use thread local hash map property all right fair enough now guys in all these implementations that I have described so far, you know, we have to create the properties in advance, which you can call a limitation. 
So to overcome that, and since we are already using test ng as our testing framework, we would leverage test ng's i test context interface to accomplish this. This interface defines a test context that contains all the information for a given test run. And when I say a test run, it is the test execution. Okay. So guys, let's pass the I test context reference as a parameter to our test method in all these test files. So in here, you have to pass I test context and let's call it context. Now this comes from test ng. So let's import it. Let me copy this and paste it in all of my test files. In here, save it, update member, put it in here, delete member, paste it in here and save it. There you go. All right. So first step is done. Now let us open this iTest context interface and see what all different method it offers. So control click on this. So you have get name, which returns the name of this test. Get start date would return you when the test was actually started. The end date when this test was stopped. Uh, how many test cases are passed? How many are skipped and so on. Now the important point is this particular interface further extends I attribute. Let's open this. And in here you have these three methods, get attribute, set attribute, and remove attribute okay so guys we are going to make use of get attribute and set attribute okay so first method is set attribute okay now this method sets a custom attribute it is similar to adding an element in map as key value pairs so this becomes your key and this becomes your value okay now you also need to pay attention that here the attribute value okay can be of any type and this is the reason this method accepts object type as a value okay then you have this get attribute method okay now this gets the value of the given attribute name and remember the return type of this method is an object okay so the advantage of using I test context reference is that it's created once and can be used with the add test annotated methods by just passing it as a parameter, just like we have done in all these classes. Okay. So whatever data you would like to use in other tests, you just need to store them in the current test context using set attribute method and to retrieve the store data you use get attribute method okay so we say context dot set attribute okay and let's call this property as member id okay and the value of this would be this okay so let's paste that in here now in other test files we have to get this attribute using get attribute okay so let's see that so again we use this reference context and then we have this method get attribute okay and it will take in a string name but remember it returns us the object okay so let's do that so the name of the attribute is member underscore id okay and we have to store that into a variable of type integer so i say int id is equal to this but remember this is an object so we have to cast it to int like so okay so let me copy this line and put that into other test cases as well save it update member paste that line in here save this file as well delete okay paste that in here and save it all right so we have created an attribute in this create member class and share that attribute with the other test methods in these separate test files okay 
So you can see there is no need to create any variables in advance. I test context provides a container, you can say, in which we can store labeled values and use those wherever required. So let's first correct this spelling mistake. So it is member underscore ID. All right, let me save this change. And now one important thing to note is that if you run the get member or update member or delete member class in isolation, you would get the null pointer exception. I do a right click on this file and select test ng test and we will get this null pointer exception. Reason is obvious. First, we have to set the value in a test context and later retrieve it in the very same test context. So test context is essentially a test execution environment in that sense. But when we run these classes in isolation, okay, they do not share the same test context. Hope that makes sense. So we have to create a test ng file and keep all of these tests under same test tag. And then we have to execute that test ng file. And that ways will ensure we are providing the same test context to all of these files. And then only it would be possible to share data, okay, using this particular approach. So guys, let's select these four test classes. Do a right click, you see the option test ng. Then you also have an option of converting to test ng. So click on that. Now let's leave the name of the file as testng.xml and click on the finish button. Now this will generate a testng.xml file at the root of your project. Open it. The first thing that you have to do now is to adjust this order. So the first operation we have to perform is to create a member. And that's happening inside this class. Then the second operation was to read a member. So then this comes next and then we have update and delete. So let me do the formatting by using control shift F and let us save this file. Why did I adjust this order? Okay. Well, this particular order, okay, will simulate CRUD operation since test ng will run your test files in the order they are found in the XML file. Okay. Please also note that all these test classes belong to the same test in here. Okay. The name of the test is test. Okay. Now this test is a tag in testng.xml. So let's save it and close it. Okay. Now do a right click on this testng.xml. Click on this run as and then testng.suite. Now let me also open the API and see whether a new record is created, updated and deleted. All right. So you see at the end, we see only six records. All right. And if we go in here, so four test cases are passed. So guys, this is how you are going to share the data amongst all these different test methods using iTestContext. Okay. So now, Let's take it to the next level and see how to pass value from different tests within the same suite. What do I mean by that? Let's see this test ng suite.xml file. Now in here, there are four tests. Okay. One, two, three, and four. Create test. Okay. Contains create member class only and so on. All these tests belong to the common test suite with the name suite. Okay. So you can say a test suite is a collection of tests. In such cases, guys, our code will fail. So let's execute this file. Okay, so you see one is passed, okay, and the remaining three are failed. So the one that is passed is we are just yes, able to create the member, but we failed to share the ID with the remaining test files. Okay, reason is obvious, right? Now, this is my test context. So for this execution, this was the test context, okay? 
so for this one it, the execution environment was different and hence the sharing failed so how do we fix that again now guys solution is again i test context but this time we need to store data at the suite level instead of the test level isn't it so if something is shared amongst the suite okay so all the tests inside that suite will be able to access that data isn't it it's that simple so guys i test context interface provide a method named as get suite which returns the i suite reference okay since i suite interface also extends your i attribute interface you again get access to set attribute and get attribute methods okay so let's do that in all four test classes and return to this test ng suite dot xml file okay how do we do that so like i said on the context you have this get suite okay which returns you what the i suite reference okay and like i said you have the set attribute method in here since i suite further extends i attribute so guys our problem is solved isn't it now all we have to do is we just have to provide the same parameters in here we close this why those parameters and let us comment this out all right we are good likewise now let's use the same thing okay but like i said you have the get suite method in here all right so let's add that okay so we are good so this is the code now that i have to use in all my remaining files okay and that's why there are two comments in all these test cases one is you know when you have to share data with apis in the same test tag but the other one is when you have to share data with apis in the same suite tag okay so let's do it for the delete as well all right so we are all good now now if i execute this run as test ng suite so now all my test cases would pass okay so in the console we see four test cases were well, run four are passed now the thing is guys since the the suite can contain multiple tests okay so this particular logic okay would work for this file as well okay in here also right there is just one test inside the suite so whatever thing that you declare at the suite level right can be accessed by this okay so if you do a right click remember we are using that get suite method in the middle this will still work so there you go it passes all right guys so that's all from this video and i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching